Hi guys, Birdie here with Redbird Designs and just doing a fun little painting with you today. I thought I'd just go live with this um, lettering project that I'm trying out and visit with you a little bit about Redbird Retreats. We only have two days left of our membership uh, open doors uh, for new memberships. Doors close October 10th, that's this Saturday at midnight. So, if you um, are thinking about uh, joining, now is the time before it's too late. Uh, we will not open the doors again until spring of 2021. Um, so if you didn't know, Redbird Retreat is our online paint membership where I teach women how to paint. Uh, we provide a safe community of like-minded artists to uh, share their work, uh, lose the fear, gain confidence, uh, make connections with others, and we also then um, obviously teach women how to paint. And in doing so, I'm just going to adjust my screen here just a minute. Uh, in doing so, or how we do that is we have that private group, this private community of uh, for our members and in that community we go live three to four times a month where we teach a new painting and with that we teach techniques uh, we talk about different brushes palette knives we do color mixing and color matching and uh, pal oh, I said palette knives um, we do some mixed media work and just kind of a, a lot of a wide scope of painting techniques, I guess. Um, and we do things from landscaping to fun, whimsical, uh, seasonal things to florals um, and kind of an rustic old farmhouse looks. So we have a lot of different variety of paintings. And so every week we go live um, and teach a new painting. Um, the great thing about it is uh, they are live so that you can join if if you want to and if your schedule allows or they're recorded and saved in the group forever. So that means you can go back at, in, at the time that's right for you that fits your schedule. You can watch it. You can pause it. You can do a small section here. You can do another part of the painting at another date. Whatever fits your schedule, um, they're always there for you. Um, and if you join now, you also have unlimited access to all the paintings uh, in, that we've done prior to today. Um, and so that just gives you more options. So if one week I'm not doing a painting that strikes a chord with you or doesn't inspire you, um, you can go back to old paintings and find something that does um, fit maybe your style. Um, we also do a monthly live question and answer time where I get on and I can um, and I visit with you about struggles, successes. We talk about maybe a few little techniques or something um, fun that I discovered that I can share with you guys to help you grow. Um, we also have uh, supply lists for each painting and tracers if needed. So if um, you know getting that sketch on your canvas makes you nervous or is, is a speed bump for you into painting, um, those are provided so that you can get right into painting. Um, and then also that you can learn on any device, whether it be your laptop, your phone, a tablet, TV, etc. And again, this is all within your own home and at your schedule. We want to help you gain confidence to create art that is original and unique to you. So two days to get signed up for that. Um, I will put a link to our website in the comments. So if you're interested in one getting more information on that, or signing up, you can just go right to this link. Our membership is $47 a month. It's a subscription-based membership, which means that um, you will be billed monthly however you pay, uh, debit, card, credit, 
debit or credit card or you can even do PayPal um, but you'll be it will automatically pull monthly and uh, there's no contract so if you give it a try and after a couple months it's just not the right fit then you are free to cancel at any time and no contract you can also pay yearly so you can pay um, four hundred and seventy dollars a year and that allows you to get two months free so there's another option there. that um, okay I just was checking to make sure that my sound is good it sounds okay all right so I think that's my spiel. So like I said, uh, monthly, you can pay monthly at $47 a month or you can pay yearly. Um, and as I'm painting today, if you have any questions, um, please don't hesitate to drop them in the comments. If you're able to hop on and watch, um, say hi and we will get started. So today I'm doing a little bit of some lettering and I'm going to use a paint marker, if I can find my paint marker, uh, to do the lettering. You could do, you could use a, um, you could use just your uh, liner brush and paint. Um, you could use a Sharpie. Um, I'm using this Art Skills permanent paint marker. I think I got these at Sam's Club as a group of paint markers. Um, what else can you use? I'm trying to find. And of course, the one I want isn't here. You can get these Craft Smart paint markers from. Um, Michaels, here's the one I was looking for, this Artistro paint marker pen. Um, and these you can get at, um, on Amazon. And the reason I like these is because they're a water based, so they're more like the acrylic. Um, and these other ones are oil based. So like this one's an oil based paint pen. And in certain situations, these are really great for, you know, multi-surface glass, things like that, but they're shiny. They have a glossy finish. And so if you're doing acrylic work in other areas on your canvas, um, sometimes that can just make it stand out a little too much. It just, I prefer to just keep all my paints the same matte or, or the same finish. So acrylics have more of a matte finish, and so this Artistro paint marker is water-based, so it has more of that matte finish. So that's why I like to use it. But anything would work, and even a, just a regular Sharpie um, doesn't have too much of a shine to it, so you could fill in yours there. If you would like to create this with me, um, or create it later after watching, and you'd like the tracer for it, just comment tracer or supplies in the comments and I'd be happy to message that to you or send it to you. So with these paint pens, if you've never used them before, um, you wanna give them a good shake and then the tip is typically white when you first get it and so you just take it to a scratch sheet of paper or some other surface and hold that or depress the tip into the marker and that will then release the paint into the tip here and so I always shake it and do that and it's like priming that tip there for me to um, load it up with paint. Okay so I don't know if you can see my sketch here but let me see if I can get a little closer. It says my favorite color is October and then I've got um, some flowers up here in the corner that I'm going to uh, paint on and flowers down here and I'm just going to do all of the lettering in uh, with this paint marker. So I'm going to start by just outlining everything. with my marker and then I'll go back in and fill it in. So 
So there's my. Okay, and then favorite. And when, if you're ordering markers to be aware that they do come in different tip sizes. So you can get them in a really thick tip, medium, and then like an extra fine tip. And I think even some come in like a chisel. So like this one is a medium tip. And let's see, I think, See how this one is a medium tip, but it's, let's see if I can turn it right. It's got a chisel to it, so it kind of applies a little bit differently. You've kind of got to be careful of that. And then the, the Sharpie here I'll show you is a fine tip, kind of the difference between the two. So if you order them, just be aware that you are getting the size that you want. If you're doing large lettering, projects like this, um, this medium tip works great. But the fine tip also works good for doing like um, outlining or adding um, fun outlines to different things like, do I have an example? Oh, I'll have to find an example. But I like to add some black outlining to some of my paintings just for some contrast. And I typically use a fine tip brush for that, but those fine tip paint markers also work great. You could, I'm doing this, oh, by the way, I'm doing this on an 11 by 17 canvas. Sorry, 11 by 14 canvas. Um, but you could easily do this in a mixed media pad and then just, if you wanted to frame it, you could um, tear it out of your mixed media pad and, and put it in a frame or um, this would look really cute on like a clipboard hanging. So you could use the clipboard as your frame and then, you know, for every season kind of do something fun, some fun lettering project for your clipboard and change them out. Just some sort of a, a heavier weight paper would be best if when using like acrylics on it. If you use a, let's just say, if you try to use a paper like copy paper, it's so thin that the water in the acrylics is going to cause it to buckle quite a bit and it's not going to lay as nice. Almost done with this part.
there we go. Those markers sure make, make that easy. Okay, so like I said, I've got a couple of flowers here. So this will be a fairly quick tutorial. I'm gonna do some orange flowers with some coral and some green leaves and maybe some yellow accents. But you could do any of your favorite um, fall colors for this. And I'm going to use just a small liner brush. That's not actually a liner brush. It's one step up from the liner. So um, this is the liner. This is, I don't even know the size of it. Maybe a four. I'll have them both out. Okay, so I've got just some really basic flowers down here that I'm gonna paint orange. And I'm gonna just keep them very loose. Some simple, fun flowers. Just a four petal type flower. I almost put a pumpkin down in the corner, but I've been painting pumpkins for so many weeks. They're almost my favorite thing to paint, and I thought, oh, I better try something else. Okay, I'm gonna just grab a little bit of this pink coral color, it's light coral, and I'm going to dip my brush in it. I'm not washing my brush, and I'm just gonna add a couple little lines inside each of these petals at the base for just to add some dimension to this flower. So it's not just a flat color. Let's see if you can see that. Yep. Scoot it up a little bit. Okay. And then I've got a dark Hauser grain that I'm going to create some leaves with. And I'm gonna get some burnt umber out for my twigs and stems. I'll wash my brush real quick. So let's see. Is, I will put a link to Okay, just double checking that we're still good. All right, so I'm gonna grab some of this dark green and actually I'm gonna get a little bit of white because I like to mix a little bit of white with my green sometimes. And I'm just gonna place a couple leaves out here they're not connected, they're more floating just next to my flower. I, I dipped it in the green and the brown just to give me maybe a fall looking leaf. It's got just a little bit of some different color in it. bit of some white streaks into my leaves. So you can see when I 
dip my brush into both the green and the brown and you can see it more here I don't know if you can on screen but there's definitely some gradient going on with that brown and the green um, and it just gives that uh, leaf just a little bit of a different color so it's not just that um, solid green and we could even go green and orange and add a little bit of orange like they're turning colors our leaves just a little bit of that orange in there would be pretty too so we'll add a streak of that okay I am going to switch to my liner brush for this next step. I've just got some twigs out here with little berries or buds on the end that I'm going to use my liner brush for. And so when you're creating really thin lines with your liner brush, even though the brush is super skinny, if you use too heavy of a pressure, you can still get a thick line. So let me just show you that. So I'll show you on my, my pad here. So if I do a really light pressure, just dragging really my brush, setting it down and dragging it across, I get a thin line. But if I use a heavy pressure, I can get a nice thick line even with my liner brush. So it's all about the pressure that you use when uh, painting and how that brush will react. Okay, so I've got my little twig there. I'm going to add a little twig at the bottom of my leaves or a stem, I guess. And then I've got a twig up here that's coming up the side. Okay. And then I'm going to add a little bit of that white and the brown and put a center in my flower, my big flower here. And then I'm going to add just a couple maybe white dots in there. I'm going to go back to my medium round and add the little berries to my stems here and I'm just using this coral color for it. So it doesn't need to be a perfect circle or a perfect dot, just a round shape. There we go. And then I'm going to grab some actually antique gold. Let's put some gold in that too. And we'll put some more, um, I guess, leaf-like elements in there. So I'm just going to add just like a brush stroke, a twig or a leaf element there. And then maybe have it come off the page there. What do you think? I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to my few of my leaves too.
Then I'm going to add a little bit of white to my berries, just a little dot on the berries for a highlight. There we go. Um, okay, so I'm going to uh, add a highlight to my petals. So I'm going back to my burnt umber or my burnt orange, I guess it is, this darker orange. I loaded my brush up with that color and then I'm going to dip it a little bit into that white and then I'm going to just come out and highlight the edge of my flowers here. So it's a little bit of a mix. It's just kind of a lighter orange color. It's not that stark white. And just blend that in a little bit. Okay, all right, so I think this area is done for right now. I might add a little bit more to it. Um, and I'm going to flip my canvas around to do the same thing or very similar to the top. So I've got that same flower just drawn up here, four petals with some leaves and some berries. So we'll go back to that orange. and do a four petal flower. Okay, and then let's grab some of that coral color and add it to the base of our leaves, just like three brush strokes. It's kind of indicate maybe where the petals folding in down at the bottom. Add a little bit of dimension. And then um, we can go right into that white here and add a little bit of the white around the edge of the flower petals. There we go. And then I'm going to place some uh, leaves in here. So I've got my dark Hauser green and I will just add a couple leaves on each side of my flower. Add a little bit of that burnt umber to it. There's some variation in green color. And then maybe a little bit of white for a lighter green petal. Okay, and then also let's um, just grab some of that orange and add an orange stripe down some of them or a little brush stroke in there. Make it look like the leaf is starting to turn colored. And you could also do the same adding just a little bit of orange to some of them. So 
they're kind of a multicolor leaf. All right, so I'm gonna switch my brush and go to my liner brush so that I can put my stems in. So I've got a stem down here, just a light pressure. And then I have a stem up here. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of a stem to my leaves here. Okay. And then let's go to that coral color and add our little berries. What else? What else? Oh, I've got to do the center of my flower, so I'm going to mix that burnt umber with a little bit of white. I don't want it too light, so it's going to be more on the dark side. And we'll just put a messy circle in the center of our flower here. And then I'm going to go grab a little bit of white and just drop some white dots in the center. Let's add our fun yellow uh, leaves, I guess. And then down here have them come off the page. Add some white highlights to our berries. I'm just dropping the white in there and kind of moving it around because my berries are still wet and it kind of just blends it in and adds just a little bit of some texture there. I think that's it. What do you guys think? Let me turn it back around. Does it need anything else? Should we add some more leaves in here? I kind of like it just like this. Very simple. And only took us 30 minutes easy art project. So if you guys want to, um, if you'd like the tracer for this and would you like to uh, paint along and create your own, just message me or type in the comments tracer or supplies and I'd be happy to send that to you. Um, but yeah, this is just something I did on, like I said, an 11 by 17, 11 by 14. You could also do it on a smaller canvas, an eight by 11. You could do it in your mixed media pad. You could do it on um, some cardstock and throw it in a frame or clip it to a clipboard and hang it in your house. And you could make the flowers whatever color you have that you're decorating fall with. Maybe it's reds or maybe more yellows. You could have the flowers be yellow and these little fun elements be a different color. Um, so really, you could make this to fit your decor perfectly. So, um, any questions? Link to
All right, guys. Well, um, that's all I had today was just this uh, fun little uh, painting and lettering project. Um, don't forget, um, if you're just hopping on and you missed the beginning, we have two days left of Redbird Retreat. Open doors, open to new members. Um, doors close for new members October uh, 10th. That's this Saturday at midnight. Um, and we will not open the doors again until uh, spring of 2021. And Redbird Retreat is just a membership where I teach women how to paint. I provide a safe environment to share work and gain confidence and grow your artistic abilities. Um, painting is so healing in so many ways. It's, it allows us an escape uh, from, you know, the day-to-day -day and the weight of the world. It... Um, allows us to express feelings that are otherwise sometimes hard with words. We can do that within our paintings. Um, it allows us to recharge when we're painting. We push aside, you know, our brain pushes aside all the worries of the world and it allows us to recharge and refuel and gives us inspiration, which we can then take into doing, you know, into our into other areas of our life. So um, just a lot of powerful healing properties with painting. So if you are interested in joining us, we'd be happy to have you. Um, as always, if you would take a friend, share our video and like our page, we would so appreciate just the few seconds it takes to help support our small business. Um, and you guys have a great day. And I will talk to you later.